When you think of yourself as a starseed, you may be imagining an awkward or ugly looking alien. Hey, who are you calling ugly? Sorry. Starseeds are actually very different from what you see on TV, and learning about them may clear up a lot of stuff about yourself and what you're doing here on planet Earth. In this video, you'll learn what a starseed actually is, then we'll go over the 10 signs of a starseed so you can spot if you're one, then you'll discover the top six types of starseed and why you need to know which type you are and what to do with that information. Coming up. Hello, beautiful soul. That intro that you just saw is for my private retreats, The Heart Accelerator, which opened their enrollment doors today. The Heart Accelerator is a life-changing event where we're going to go deep into healing, we're gonna have group coaching, we're going to have community building, and nightly sound healing ceremonies that are amazing, and so much more. I'll only be doing one retreat in 2022, and it's going to be from April 24th through May 1st, so I look forward to possibly welcoming you to the breathtaking Algarve region in the south of Portugal. The enrollment doors will be closing on November 4th, so if you're interested in joining me on retreat, click on the link in the description box below where you can learn more about this retreat and book your spot while it lasts. On to part one of the video, what's a starseed? So here's an easy look into what a starseed is. So starseeds are old souls who come from different planets, galaxies, and realms of existence. What distinguishes star seeds from us is the level of advancement that they're at. So, a star, so star seeds are pretty light years ahead in terms of evolution of consciousness, but specifically evolution of technology and science. So they're light here, years ahead of us. And what star seeds do is they come into planet Earth to assist humanity and assist the planet in the shift in consciousness and assist the planet into going into the, its own evolution and humans going into their own evolution. Now, the majority of star seeds are benevolent. They're, they're not all benevolent, but for the purposes of this video, I'm only going to be talking about the benevolent star seeds because those are the ones that we really need to focus on the most because this video is really about you locating yourself in one type of star seed. For the most part, they're benevolent. They're here to help. And even the ones that aren't here to help, they really don't bother much, especially when people wake up, right? So the star seeds, the types of star seeds that are here, not for very pure reasons, they're usually here to manipulate and feed on fear. And as soon as humans start to wake up and their levels of consciousness increase, then the uh, the less benevolent star seed types really cease to have any power on the planet because they only have power on the planet through humans being asleep. All right. So, but for the purposes of this video here, I'm only going to be talking about the benevolent types of star seeds that are out there. On to part two of the video, the 10 signs of a star seed. So this list isn't exhaustive, but it's going to give you some of the top signs of a star seed so you can spot right away if you're one of them, all right? The first sign of a star seed, probably the most, this is probably the most popular one of all, is that you don't feel like you belong here. You don't belong here, all right? So the star seeds that I've contacted with, and I've contacted with thousands of people from all over the world that are star seeds, this is the number one sign that they have of being a star seed, is that they just do not fit. They feel like they don't belong. They actually feel like outsiders. A lot of them will use the word outsider. And this is really, really normal because when you're a starseed, you're not actually from here. So having that sensation of not belonging is really, really common. And it's something that's very deep in starseeds. And, and sometimes it's something that is really traumatizing to them because for a long time, they try to fit in with regular humans and they're not. So it's never going to happen. So this may be a sign that really bothers starseeds, especially when they're younger until they finally find out that they're a starseed. All right. So top sign, you don't feel like you belong or you feel like you're an outsider um, down here on planet Earth. 
Sign number two is discomfort in the body. So star seeds are really funny in that sense is that they don't feel comfortable a lot of times. They don't feel comfortable in a human meat suit. I call it the meat suit, okay? And the reason that the star seed doesn't feel comfortable in the human body a lot of times is when it's a star seed that hasn't incarnated a lot in human form, when they put on this meat suit or this human form, it's so foreign to what they're used to incarnating in different realms of reality. The human form is very very different. And so for a lot of star seeds, they will feel discomfort in the body to a point where they actually uh, feel like they want to check out of the body because the human form is sometimes too intense for a star seed, especially the aspect of humans being very emotional beings and emotions being felt in the body. Sometimes that's really intense for a star seed. So discomfort in the body, not feeling comfortable in your skin is another very common sign of a star seed. Sign number three, three is that you feel like an outsider. Okay. So this is a little deeper than not belonging here, which was sign number one in this one here. Uh, this is specific actually within the family unit. So a lot of times star seeds will tell me that they are complete outsider, not just in regular society, but in their own families, they feel like they're the black sheep of the family. They are completely different sometimes from the rest of their siblings, from their parents. A lot of times I've had star seeds who uh, come to me and they don't even look like their family. So they are actually physically totally different from their family. And this is a really, really common trait that even imbues um, genetically in them that they come out looking completely different from their siblings or their parents. But even if they do have physical similarities, a lot of times starseeds will still feel like outsiders within their family unit. Uh, precisely because they're incarnating a lot of times in a family unit that may not be star seeds. And so the star seed comes in and of course they have totally different energy. So they'll feel completely like an outsider. Sign number four is called fast transformation. So a star seed, when a star seed uh, awakens, especially when they awaken, they're, they're pretty much always like that throughout their lives. They can change very quickly, but this is especially true when a star seed goes online. I'm using air quotes here because really what that means is is really when the star seed awakens when a star seed awakens their pace of transformation is just totally accelerated they can shift and change their energy much faster than a non star seed all right than a regular human. I'm going to use air quotes here. Um, they change their energy shifts. They go through processes of ascension and acceleration that are, that are so much faster than regular humans. And that's precisely because the star seed comes already imbued with a very accelerated energy system. And this is especially true right when they awaken and they actually find out they're a star seed, then that transformation even gets faster. Sign number five is memories of other planets. So this is really common with star seeds especially when they awaken. So sometimes star seeds can be meditating and they can have visions of actually where they come from, or they can have dreams, detailed dreams of different locations, completely different planets and places that are totally different from planet earth. This is very common with star seeds. This has happened to me also when I'm in deep trance meditation, I can connect with the actual place that I come from and I can see it in detail. So this is very, very common with star seeds to be able to through trance meditation or in dreams, or sometimes uh, just in regular waking day life, they can remember or they can see details of where they come from. And it's places that are completely different from planet earth and from even our galaxy here. Sign number six is looking up at the sky. Okay. This one's a really common one, especially when a star seed is a child. So a lot of times uh, when I've worked with star seeds uh, and they talk about their childhood, they'll say, you know, when I was a little girl or when I was a little boy, I was a little bit of a loner and I'd just stand in front of the window and I'd be looking up at the sky, just looking at the stars and looking up at the sky. This is actually really common in star seed children. Um, especially younger children, because when they come into the body at first, they feel like, you know, where the heck am I? And so they can stare up at the sky quite frequently. So this is very, very common. So if this has happened to you, especially as a child, there's this fascination with looking up in the, at the stars, looking up um, into the sky. If you had this fascination as a child, that's another sign of being a starseed. Sign number seven is that you're sensitive. So the majority of star seeds are what's known as empaths or HSPs, uh, highly sensitive people. 
And so star seeds are very, very sensitive usually. Um, so you'll be an empath or an HSP or, or you'll have, uh, you'll be very sensitive in general. This is very, very common uh, with star seeds. They have to be sensitive and they come prepared to be empaths or HSPs because their sensitivities then help with the transitions and all of the things they're trying to help down here on planet Earth, all right? So if you're an empath or a highly sensitive person or an HSP, that's another sign that you may be uh, a starseed. Sign number eight of a starseed is a sense of purpose. So starseeds come down here. The majority of starseeds are here to help humanity. And so they have a really, really strong sense of purpose. And that sense of purpose will really drive them their whole lives. Okay, so it's very, very common, especially when a starseed awakens. So when a starseed wakes up, they'll even start uh, going after that purpose or uh, walking towards their life purpose and their mission with a lot more more, um, with a lot more attention. They really focus a lot of attention on their purpose here. And it's because they're programmed to be down here helping. And so that, that mission and that purpose will always drive them and kind of be pinging from their heart, whether they're awake or not, but especially when they awaken, their sense of purpose increases even more. Sign number nine is that you feel old. Okay. So I put, I'm putting this here in, in air quotes because really what this means is that the star seed very frequently will feel like an old soul. Like they feel like they've been around the block quite a few times. They have real, they're really intelligence. They have a lot of wisdom that goes beyond their years. Um, and it's because they're from advanced, more advanced civilizations. So they come back to kind of help planet earth. And so that sense of, of having a lot of wisdom of having a lot of know-how of having an intelligence that's not coming from this world is very common. These are souls that have been really around the block. They've incarnated in so many different realities and so many different planes of existence. And so they have this feeling of being an old soul. So if you ever catch yourself kind of with this sensation that, you know, you're an old soul, or if the term old soul really resonates with you, it could be a sign that you are a star seed. Sign number 10 and the last one is seeks to expand. So a star seed is constantly expanding because their energy moves so quickly, because they grow so quickly, because they expand so quickly they are constantly looking to learn, all right? So a very, very common trait of a star seed is that star seeds are lifelong voracious students. They love to learn new things. They love to expand. They love to grow. They love to develop themselves, okay? So this drive to, to expand is very, very imbued in a star seed. Uh, so this is the last sign. So maybe this 10th sign also applies to you. On to part three of the video, the top eight types of star seeds. So there are more types, but these eight are the ones that I have found most frequently in the work that I've done with thousands of people from all over the world and connecting with so many star seeds. These are the eight that I have found most. So I'm going to talk about them, but this isn't an exhaustive list. It's not to say that there aren't more. There are more for sure. All right. Now I want to leave a pro tip here. Okay. So pro tip, ding, ding. <laughs> so the pro tip here is that as I'm going through the list, don't just listen to what I'm saying, but also feel what it, what that energy of each type that I'm talking about, feel what it feels in your body. So if I'm talking about a specific type, yeah, listen to what I'm saying, but also listen to your body's reaction to what I'm saying. A lot of times you can spot your own starseed heritage just by either listening to the name of the starseed, uh, the, the type of the starseed, or just listening to the words about the starseeds. You might feel a click or a feeling in your body that's kind of a, a confirmation or a yes that this is the type of starseed you are. All right. So that's the pro tip. Feel in your body what different feelings and sensations that you may have as I'm going through the list of the eight types. Type number one. And probably the most common is Pleiadian. All right. So Pleiadians are star seeds that originate in the cluster, in the star cluster known as the Pleiades or also known as the seven sisters. Okay. So Pleiadians to a lot of teachers, Pleiadians really are the future humans. So you can think of Pleiadians as humans thousands of years from now. 
Pleiadians are really active on the planet right now, so it's it's almost like they come back to their past or their original uh, race. They come back to their past in order to help us humans navigate the change on the planet. They're very, very powerful healers. Um, they're also considered the record keepers of Earth, all right? So that's one of their roles. Um, they kind of keep the records straight, so they take a records of what's happening down here. But they're also really, really strong in healing. They have a lot of advanced technology in uh, medical advanced technology or healing advanced technology. And here's another quirk about Pleiadians that's really cool. Uh, Pleiadians have a lot of feminine energy, all right? So ding, ding. Pleiadians have a really, really strong feminine energy which means that their energy comes across a little bit more soft, but also it lends itself to their powerful healing capabilities that Pleiadians have. But they're not just into healing. They can come down here and help with technology also, but I'm just giving you the most common facets of a Pleiadian so you can see if this feels right for you. Very, very powerful feminine energy, very powerful healing energy, very advanced technology when it comes to healing, um, when it comes to treating disease and all of that stuff. They're very advanced in that. Um, so that's type number one. Type number two is called Octurians. So Octurians come from uh, the Octurus. It's called Octurus. It's the brightest star in the Boots constellation. So Octurians are actually considered the most advanced of all of the star seeds present on Earth right now. They are the most advanced of all. So that's one little quirk about them. Um, very advanced beings, extremely advanced beings. They come from this specific star, a very, very bright star in the Boots constellation. Octurians are usually divided in two buckets, okay? So the first bucket of Octurians, these are quintessential leaders, okay? So these types of Arcturians, these are Arcturians that are master builders. They are planners. They're architects, okay? So this type of Arcturian is really down here to build things and create transformation actually through the building of physical matter, but also through leadership, all right? So that's your first bucket of Octurians. Then you have the second bucket of Octurians, which they branch more also in leadership, but leadership differently from the builders and the planners of the world. These are more the spiritual teachers, okay? So there's a lot of Octurian starseeds down here on earth that are spiritual teachers. Another type of leadership a lot of wisdom, and they're still leading, but they're leading from a completely different way than the builder is or the architect is, all right? So, but regardless of which two buckets uh, you fall into, whether it's the builders or whether it's more of the spiritual teachers, um, the spiritual leaders, whether, regardless of, of these two buckets, they both are very, very strong leaders. And this kind of, uh, this leadership role of Octurians comes in because of their advancement, because of how advanced they are in terms of consciousness and their evolution, they're able to provide a more mature type of leadership that's, um, that's not as common down here on planet Earth. The third type of star seeds is Syrian, okay? So Syrians come from the planets Sirius A and Sirius B. And one interesting fact is that Sirius A is actually the brightest star that you can see in the sky here on planet Earth. So when you look up in the sky, that brightest star, that's actually Sirius A. It's the brightest star um, in our sky. It's believed that these planets are actually responsible for the initiation of awakening in all humans, okay? So that's a cool little quirk about, about uh, these two planets. Syrians are here. They are the ultimate peacekeepers, okay? So Syrians are here very much as guardians, very much as peacekeepers. They just want everyone to get along. They work very, very strongly uh, for a lot of cooperation, for people to just uh, stop fighting with each other. They are the quintessential uh, peacekeepers. They have very, very gentle, beautiful energy um, and very guardian-like energy, okay? Almost angelic sometimes. It feels sometimes angelic, their, their energy. Very gentle, but the quintessential peacekeepers uh, on the planet, those are the Syrians.
The fourth type of starseed are Andromedans, and Andromedans come from the Andromeda galaxy, and these are really, really heart-centered, loving beings, okay? So they also have a very, very gentle energy. They're also on the planet, very much like Syrians, they're on the planet to bring peace and love, but a little bit of a different energy. So Andromedans have a quirk, and the quirk with Andromedans is that they have a very, very present inner child, so they are very childlike in their energy, which is a little bit different from the Syrians. They have this beautiful, pure, very childlike energy, and, and they just really help uh, kind of stream in pure, pure love. Love and peace, very, very gentle in their energy, but also very playful in their energy because of that active inner child. There aren't as many Andromedans down here as there are other starseed races, and sometimes it can be really difficult for Andromedans to be in human form because they are naturally very high vibrational beings. So some of the starseeds that we've been talking about, they'll exist around, you know, the fifth or sixth dimension. Andromedans can go as high is 12th dimensional. So that's why they can stream down so much love. So when you're that high vibrational and then you have to come down into density and into a, a third, 3D reality human form, it could be really painful. And a lot of times it is very painful for Andromedans to be down here. So there's a small number of them here, uh, but they're very, very powerful in bringing in streaming down that loving energy pre precisely because of how high their natural vibration is. The fifth type of star seed, the, they're called Lemurians or Atlantis. Antians, okay, so these two star, star seeds are interesting because these are considered to be the the first two star seeds that that actually originate here on planet Earth in the continent of Mu, which is Lem or Lemuria, and the continent of Atlantis. These are now sunken uh, continents. So Mu existed on the Pacific uh, in the Pacific Ocean. Atlantis existed in the Atlantic Ocean. These were very very advanced civilizations, especially in technology and healing capabilities, and eventually these civilizations civilizations uh, collapsed because of all that advancement was misused and the, these civilizations collapsed. So these two civilizations no longer actually exist, but I leave them here because these two places, uh, both Atlantis and Lemuria, these, this is the site where a lot of starseeds from other planets also came in and, and incarnated there and played around in that time of Atlantis and Lemuria. And a lot of starseeds today remember specific lifetimes that they had in the continent of Atlantis or Lemuria, all right? So I leave this here, uh, not so much for you to identify if you're a Lemurian or Atlantean because that, that um, those two races, that civilization collapsed and they no longer exist, but for you to remember that if you have any specific memories from a lifetime in Atlantis or Lemuria, you can retrieve a lot of knowledge from these from these lifetimes because chances are you were involved with a civilization that was extremely advanced, especially in technology and healing capabilities. So you can retrieve a lot of knowledge from these lifetimes if you did, uh, if you do remember of any lifetimes in these two continents or these two civilizations. Type number six is light workers, and I've put this one here last because. Um, they don't all, not all light workers have to be star seeds, all right? So light workers are souls that are on the planet to to help. They are they are here for a mission of service, okay? That's generally what a light worker is, but you don't need to be a star seed in order to be a light worker. But the reason that I'm leaving this type, this as a star seed type, is because the vast majority of star seeds that I've encountered um, are light workers, okay? Uh, and the vast majority of light workers that I've encountered are star seeds. So I wanted to leave this here, but I wanted to leave a little side note. So ding, ding, here's the side note. And the side note is that not all light workers are star seeds, but the majority of star seeds that I've worked with are in fact light workers. And these are people that are here. These are souls and star seeds that are here, a mission of service to the planet. They're very, very active in helping the planet as ascend and in helping humanity, not just humanity, but also nature. Uh, planet Earth herself, animals, they're here to assist in one way or another, here to serve in one way or another. Now, if you resonate with the word light worker and you want to go deeper on this type of star seed, you want to go deeper and you want to figure out what a light worker is, what the light worker mission is, and a lot more details than I gave you here, 
I shot a whole video on Lightworkers. I'm going to leave a link in the description box below so you can watch that video after watching this one. Now, as you went through these different types that I just shared with you, you may have already felt a resonance toward a specific type of starseed. So write that down and start to kind of play around if you did have a strong reaction to any one of the types that I shared here. If you didn't, or if you want to confirm, there are actually a lot of free starseed quizzes online. You could just go online and you can look up a free starseed quiz and it'll give you different questions that'll help pinpoint what starseed race you may belong to. So that that's really easy to find uh, on the internet and that may help you in confirming what type of starseed you are. Regardless of how you do it, whether it's through intuition or whether you want to confirm with an online quiz, once you find out what type of light worker you are, now it's on to part four of the video. On to part four of the video, why you need to know. So you may be thinking, you know, who cares if I'm a Pleiadian or Arcturian or Syrian or whatever? Who cares? Why is it important for me to know my starseed heritage? And really, there are two main reasons. It is important for you to know, and there are two main reasons why it's pretty crucial for you to know if you are a starseed and what type of starseed. The first reason is for self-acceptance, okay? Self-acceptance really is crucial. A lot of times what happens with starseeds is because they, they don't feel like they belong, because they feel like they're outsiders, because they have all these signs, the ones that I shared in this video already, a lot of times uh, starseeds can feel really awkward down here. And until they know they're a starseed, sometimes they can have a lot of difficulties accepting themselves. And what ends up happening is a lot of times starseeds will spend many years of their lives trying to fit in to being regular humans when they're really not. And that'll just cause a lot of suffering because there's no way a starseed can ever fit in and pretend to be a regular human. That's like a sheep trying to pretend to be a wolf. It'll never, ever work. And so if, if the starseed doesn't accept that they what they are and doesn't know what they are, a lot of times they can suffer a lot by trying to fit in uh, to places where they don't fit in. All right. So self-acceptance really is the first reason why it's crucial for you to know if you're a starseed or not. But aside from self-acceptance, it, it goes deeper than just being able to accept myself and the fact that I don't fit in into regular human society. It goes beyond that. It, the self-acceptance gets so deep that what ends up happening is the starseed stops trying to fit in. They come into their power and they realize that they're not supposed to fit in. And once they do that, they realize that they're here to actually help humans and they start to get more uh, involved in their purpose and their mission more um, with a lot more joy and a lot more happiness without feeling like they have to constantly be fitting in. All right. So this acceptance goes really deep all the way to the point where they actually start to fulfill their mission and their purpose once they know they're a starseed and they accept that about themselves. The second reason it's important to know if you're a starseed and which type of starseed you are is in order to connect with your family. This is, this is so, so cool. So once you figure out what type of starseed you are, then you can start trying trying to connect with your family. This is important because the more you can consciously co connect with your starseed family, the more that connection will reinforce itself and you can start retrieving your own heritage in the form of gifts, talents, guidance, a lot of guidance that can come through through your starseed family. And, but you need to be consciously connected with them. Okay, so this is a really, really important one. Um, it was important for me. As soon as I connected to my starseed family, so much information started to come in and so much guidance guidance started to come in. It was like this just, just, uh, uh, you know, fresh air coming in as soon as I connected with them. It's super, super important to have that connection to your star family. And as soon as you figure out what type of star uh, seed you are, it's much easier to establish that connection too. So here's a quick exercise to help you connect to your starseed family. Once you find out what type of starseed and you've been playing around with that a little bit more, then it's time to connect with your starseed family. And here's a quick exercise to help you. All right. So step one of the exercise is just clear intention, which is probably the most important aspect of it. Okay. So set yourself a clear intention that you would like to connect with your starseed family. And I'm going to add a mantra here. Um, you can do this just sitting quietly. Um, you can develop your own mantras if you want to, but I'm going to share a mantra that I love to use and you can write this one down and use it on your own. Okay. So here's the mantra. Uh, I intend to connect with my starseed family and accept their help. 
Okay. I love this mantra because what it does is open, it opens up your energy for you to start connecting with them and start receiving their guidance. One of the most important aspects of connecting with your starseed family is the guidance aspect, right? They are always available to help you, but while you're asleep, it's hard to, to the, the, it's like the channels of communication get cut off. So when you open your energy to your starseed family, you're going to be, uh, you're just going to be amazed at how much guidance comes through from them. Okay. Now you may, you may connect with them immediately and you may connect with them right away. You may even see them. You may use your third eye, all kinds of things happen. And that does, that's really less important, um, as to how you connect with them. But what's most important is that you set the intention and that connection will come in eventually one way or another. Step number two is to sit in meditation. So after you set the intention and maybe you repeat that mantra over and over and over again, a few times to reinforce your intention, then just sit in meditation, sit quietly and see what happens. Okay. A lot of times, if you have a developed third eye, a lot of times you may actually start to see your starseed family, like their physical characteristics, they may show themselves to you. For other people who have less developed third eyes, maybe you don't see anything, but maybe you start to feel sensations, or maybe you have some kind of memory or some kind of emotional reaction. Regardless, this sitting in meditation is really important because it gives you that time to establish that connection and then see what happens afterwards. Okay. So sit in meditation for a little while, just in silence with your eyes closed after repeating that intention and see what comes through. Um, as, as soon as you establish that connection, see what, what comes through. Um, and the more quiet you are, the more kind of in silence and with your eyes closed, the easier it is for you to start deciphering messages. Step three of this exercise is to write. Okay. So once you set the intention to connect with your starseed family, and then you sit in meditation, maybe Maybe you start to receive things right away, or maybe you receive messages or, or guidance days after this exercise. It doesn't matter. The point is that be it, you have this habit of writing, of having a journal and starting to write things down, especially if you start to receive any sensations or any uh, guidance. The trick with writing is that as soon as you start to write, what ends up happening is it'll free up energy and a lot more information may start coming in. Okay. So make it a habit of writing things down as you're receiving them. And that'll open the channel up more for you to receive even more guidance. Now I want to hear from you. Leave in the comments below, which type of star seed are you? If you figured it out from this video, I want to hear all about it in the comments below. Click here to subscribe to my YouTube channel or head over to my website where you can join our retreat. Remember that the enrollment window will be closing on November 4th. And don't forget this video here that I talked about lightworkers. This will be great for you to continue viewing. All right, beautiful soul. I love you. I'm out.